In this video, I'll show you how to get the best possible 3D print from your ANET A8 by tweaking and calibrating and upgrading the various parts and settings on your printer. First thing you should do when you buy PLA is run a test print to see which temperature your PLA prints the best at. This is called a heat calibration tower and in Cura 15 you can tweak the temperature at a certain height. On this one it's every 10 millimeters and this one starts out at 220 degrees and then goes 4 degrees cooler each time. 220 is way too hot and then it starts to smooth out right there. And that's around 188 between 192 is probably the best for you about right here in that area and that's uh, pretty consistent with what the box says on this PLA is as uh, 192 about 210 once you know what temperature your PLA works best at you can set that up in your slicer software the second test that I ran on this was the extrusion rate test I printed out these blocks which are 15 by 15 and the walls are 0.4 thickness. And you see the size is a little bit off and this is at 100% flow percent. See there's a little bit of under extrusion on the edges here. But the main thing is the size of the object is not exactly what you want it to be. Then I moved up to 103% on the flow and it pretty much had the same results. So on about 109% flow you start getting a good size and everything. So there's 15 by 15 and the size is about 0.4. Let me see if you can see the difference between the 100% flow and the 109% flow. I mean, it's it, it's minuscule, but you can see that this is a lot smoother, less uh, space in between the in between the lines. The lines are are smaller and finer. You can see where the glare is. The differences in in 100% flow and 109% flow. So I set my flow in Cura to 110, and that seems to give a very very good uh, flow rate. So the third thing to consider when printing is your bed temperature. If your bed is too hot, then the edges of your print will curl up, and and then it will pop off your bed sometimes. You see on this print how the edge is kind of rounded on this. Right through here you can kind of see that the print melted, the edge is melted and lifted off the bed in the middle of the print but it's still stuck enough to finish the print. That's because my bed temperature was too high. The bed temperature has to be less than the glass transition temperature of PLA. PLA has a glass transition temperature of 60 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius and I had my bed set at about 64 and so it melts the edge. Third tweak I would do is a glass bed. You can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get a piece of two millimeter glass for under three bucks have them cut it for you at a 22 by 22 centimeters. You can also purchase borosilicate glass online on eBay. Uh, cheapest I've seen was around $16. Borosilicate glass is the stuff your mom's Pyrex bowls are made out of. I've had no problems with this being heated up to around 59 to 60 degrees Celsius without it uh, cracking or anything like this. And this is just regular window pane glass from uh, from Lowe's. I'll show you how I set my glass up. Take a microfiber cloth and 25% uh, solution of rubbing alcohol, rubbing alcohol and water. 
spray your microfiber cloth and clean your glass. Go to the Dollar Tree store and buy yourself a generic bottle of hairspray. This is a 5.5 ounce, the purple and gray. While you're at the Dollar Tree store, pick up a 12 pack of these uh, binder clips used for holding papers and files together. You'll be using these clips for the side of your, and you put one here, one here, and two back here because I don't put any on this side because that's where this nozzle comes in. So you want this side clear. First shake your hairspray up and then Usually do about three crosses, one this way, one this way, and then another this way. That'll give a nice thick layer on there. And always spray the hairspray away from your machine because this is sticky and messy and has chemicals in it that may affect the acrylic of your frame. And this is still wet and I'm applying the retainer clips to the edges. Turn your printer on and preheat your bed. And once your bed reaches the preheat temperature, let it sit for about a minute to evaporate all the water out of the hairspray. And the fourth upgrade you can do is print off this pulley cover for the Y axis. It has a toothed, you can see the teeth here, and it goes over these ball bearings. Then I also printed off a toothed pulley cover for the x-axis but this is a lot not as wide as the y-axis because it wouldn't fit in between here and using these toothed gears will help to reduce the the rippling the ripples in this plastic come from the teeth on this belt going over the ball bearings this this was printed before I put these gears on the higher the temperature, the more the ripples are exaggerated in, in the print. So any vibration, even this ghosting of the numbers, that's vibration in your frame or vibration in your belt. And the hotter your, your temperature is, the worse your rippling is going to be because the filament is going to be more flexible for a longer time you're going to have more ripples and, and ridges you can also buy these online and they're made out of metal for the ANET A8 I don't know how much they are another tweak that you must do if you're not using auto bed leveling is get an, a, a Z fine tuning fine adjust setup this takes your Z and mounts it off to the side from here and mounts it out here and then you can adjust your Z so after you get your bed leveled in all, all four corners and in the middle you really don't need to re-level your bed unless you move your ANET A8 or you disassemble it for some reason but this allows me to fine-tune my Z axis to just microns. Take a regular cotton terry cloth, wipe the nozzle, make sure there's no plastic on it. That's after you, this is after you've preheated your nozzle and your bed. You don't want to do this while your bed is cold. Take your piece of paper, home your system, home all from the menu. And then disable the stepper motors. Move this forward so you can slide this in. And see the paper is a little bit tight, but not too bad. Could use a little bit of adjusting. And it's pretty much the same tension on all four corners. If not, if it's not the same amount of tension, just adjust your thumb screws on the corresponding corner. But since this is a little bit tight, I'm going to screw this down about one notch.
three home. And disable the stepper motors again. And it's a lot looser now. On this mod, I modified this bracket because my nozzle sits very close to the extruder gear and the uh, pulley. So this had to come down five millimeters for this uh, Z switch to even allow my nozzle to get close enough. I didn't have to go out and purchase any hardware, extra hardware, because I just used all the screws that uh, were extra with the uh, printer. On these, these are 30 millimeter screws. I had to put a nut on the underneath of them because they would not, uh, they couldn't go deep enough to hold this bracket on. So putting a nut on there and then screwing them in worked fine. This is just a 30 millimeter screw that came with the printer. And the sixth mod I did was this air nozzle. Um, I've tried two nozzles pretty much like this. One was unmodified and was too long because this nozzle sits all the way up against the extruder pulley like I said. There's a short nozzle on Thingiverse that I tried but that was still too long. So I went into Tinkercad, imported this STL into Tinkercad and took about two millimeters off of that original uh, short nozzle and this gives me uh, maybe about two millimeters clearance on this. And one of the last mods I did was this filament guide and this keeps your filament from going in cross you know at an angle and chafing on this hole on top of the extruder so regardless whether it's going back and forth left and right this filament will go straight down into the hole so if you have bits of your filament on top of your extruder that's because your filament's going in at an angle and hitting the side of this hole and getting cut. So this is the upgrades I've done to my ANET A8 so far to make this thing print a lot better and a lot smoother. I have a Raspberry Pi 3 on order so that I can run OctoPrint and I don't have to keep my computer online all the time when this thing is printing and I don't have to keep inserting and ejecting a SD card every time I want to print something.